hi everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing well so for this video i thought i'd share with you my top tips for drawing realistic ginger fur with coloured pencils if you'd like a more in-depth tutorial where you can draw along with me step by step while i discuss every single layer color and technique in detail then head over to my patreon where you'll also get access to over 30 colour pencil tutorials of pets and wildlife and i'll leave the link in the video description below so for this video then i'm working on white pastel matte paper and i'm using a mixture of faber castell polychromos and caran dash luminance pencils i've already drawn out the basic outlines of the fur and i'm going to start by using my lightest colours first and with coloured pencils you always want to tend to use your lightest colours first to sort of map out your shadows Ginger fur is like really rich in colour, so you definitely want to capture that in your drawing. Um, there's, a, there's quite a few colours involved from like a range of yellows and oranges to browns and pinks. So how you layer those colours will in a way determine the vibrancy of the finished outcome along with capturing the light. I like to use luminance pencils initially, so I've used the shades Buff Titanium and Raw Umber 10% to add a base layer and map out those basic shapes in the fur and areas of light and dark. The luminance pencils are predominantly wax based, so they provide that really nice creamy base layer to work on top of, and they're also excellent for blending, whereas the Polychromo pencils are quite rich in colour and they're better for like building up layers and also for the finer details. So I think at this stage it's good if you go in with your sort of brighter yellows as they show up as like a really vibrant bright undertone that shows up through your layers. So for example I've used a polychromo pencil in the shade cream which is quite a bright yellow. You can then start to go in with your warmer oranges like the brown ochre luminance pencil working into the shadows and mid-tones and you can pull out some of those richer colours by going in with really bright shades like the dark cadmium orange which is almost like a neon orange um, and that'll help just really capturing that lighting that's bouncing off the fur in certain areas. You can use those really bright colours quite subtly but it'll really enhance your drawing. With the browns like the shade Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sepia, you can really start to work into those shadows and define those smaller tufts of fur. The pastel matte paper really grips onto your pigment so you can work with a fairly light pressure and build it up as you go. Once you're at this stage, you can then use a range of pink shades, such as the Venetian Red or the Carpet Morton, which is what I've used here, just to really warm up those colours. With Ginger Fur, you want the colours to be as vibrant and as saturated as possible, so by adding the pink shades, it'll really enhance that tonal value. So now you really just want to start building up those layers and colours and keep alternating between your yellows, pinks, oranges and browns until you create some real depth to that fur. I find it easier if you see the fur as like a series of shapes and focus on smaller individual tufts of fur, sort of splitting it into sort of light, medium and dark tones to really capture that lighting. Every layer that you add almost squashes down the tooth of the paper so that fur is gradually getting smoother. And you can almost incorporate those darker fur details in and amongst your layers and start building them up. But you mainly want to focus on achieving the accurate tonal value and just continuing to increase the saturation of those rich gingery colours. The shade Burnt Sienna is a really rusty orange colour which is probably the colour that I've predominantly used in the shadows and the mid-tones. You want to use the shades Burnt Umber or Dark Sepia which are darker browns to work into the darkest bits of the shadows. That'll really start to create a contrast in lighting which in turn will help you to create that realistic level of depth. And it'll just make it a bit clearer as to which tufts of fur are sort of overlapping or in the foreground.
I like to use the paler shades of the luminance pencil, such as the shade Primrose, to pull out areas of highlight and blend layers together so you get that really smooth finish which resembles soft fur. Once you're happy with your tonal value and the colour, you can then start to add in those finer details. So I'm going to use the Caran d'Ache White Museum Aquarelle Pencil to draw in those wispy hairs over the top. The good thing about using this pencil is that it shows up really really well over multiple layers of pigment. I'm applying quite hard pressure as well and making sure it's quite sharp. And then now it's really all about refining those details and picking out colours until you get to a point which looks a lot more realistic. In Ginger Fair I like to include some metallic polychromo shades like the copper or the gold because they just really enhance your drawing when it's seen in certain lights. Just to finish off those highlighted finer hairs that are sort of in and amongst the fur, I'm using a white fine nib uniball Posca pen which layers over the top of your colour pencils quite nicely and then I'm going in with a craft knife slice tool which I use for those intricate hair details that you can't really achieve with coloured pencils alone. This is more of like a removal technique where you can lightly scrape away those top layers of pencil to reveal the paper underneath and you're sort of lightly etching in detail. So thank you so much for watching my top tips video on how to achieve realistic ginger fur. Like I said at the start, if you want a more in-depth tutorial then head over to my Patreon, the link is down below in the video description. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Thank you!